All right, so you guys may have figured out I'm going to be talking about and teaching you about dividing fractions. Um, it's not actually because I struggle with this in school. I was actually super lucky to have absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing math teachers. Um, but I just think it's a really, really important concept, and it's important to know why dividing fractions works and not just that it does work. As far as the mechanics go behind dividing fractions, it's actually not that much different than multiplying fractions. Whenever you divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by its inverse. So for example, if I take 1 over 3 divided by 1 over 3, this is actually the same thing as 1 over 3 multiplied by 3 over 1. So 3 over 1 comes from the fact that that is what happens when you flip 1 over 3. So now if we take our multiplication rules of fractions, then you'll see we get the numerator multiplied by the numerator and the denominator multiplied by the denominator, so 3 over 3, which equals 1. And this makes sense because we know that any number divided by itself is going to equal 1. But what if we use different fractions? Let's try doing negative 5 sixths and divide that by 10 over 3. So the first thing we have to do is flip the second term so we're looking at a multiplication question. So the negative 5 sixths multiplied by 3 over 10 because 3 over 10 is the inverse of 10 over 3. So looking at this, we can see right away we could simplify it, um, but I'll show you that in a moment. Let's just try working this out as it is first. So you can see negative 5 times 3. On the top, we'll get negative 15. On the bottom, 6 times 10 is 60. So looking at this right away, you can also see that 15 goes into both the top and the bottom. Top simplifies to 1 bottom to 4. So we get an answer of negative 1 over 4. Now if we try doing this, so we simplify it first, let's try negative 5 over 6 times 3 over 10. You can see 5 and 10 have a common factor. So simplify this out. 1, 2, and 3 and 6 also have a common factor of 3, so you get 1 and 2. So you got 1 times 1 on the top, negative 1 times 1, and then you have 2 times 2 on the bottom, so you get the same answer of negative 1 quarter. Okay, so now what about when we have a whole number? Let's try negative 2 over 7 divided by negative 3. Well, any whole number can be made into a fraction. So negative 3, negative 3 over 1, that's the same thing. So now negative 2 over 7 multiplied by negative 1 over 3. We use our same principles from before, and we know that a negative multiplied by a negative is positive. So we get 2 over 21, easy as pie. Now that is fine and dandy, just wonderful. It works. But why does it work? We are not satisfied with rote memorization anymore. Okay, so let's find out why this makes sense. Okay, so let's say I have two pies. Two yummy, delicious, identical pies. Lucky me. Here's one, here's two. All right, so I want to divide each pie into thirds. So two pies divided into thirds. I'm gonna find out what that equals. So I'm gonna draw a picture here so you can see. Divide into thirds, here's one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see if the math tracks out. Two divided by one third is the same as two over one multiplied by three over one, which equals six over one, which equals six. So you can see this totally makes sense with our pi example. Let's look at this one more way. Let's say we want to divide something by one half. Well, this is the same as multiplying by its inverse, or two over one 
or two. So first off, I'm going to remind you guys what it looks like to divide by two. Okay, so we're going to take four objects. Let's say grapefruit. Here's one, two, three, four grapefruit. And we would want to divide them into groups of two. Here's a group of two. Here's a group of two. So four divided by two, ta-da, equals two. Okay, but you already knew that. So now I'm gonna look at these four objects again, these four grapefruits. This time, I'm gonna take the four grapefruit and I'm gonna divide it by one half. So that means we want to group these grapefruits into groups of one half. So here's about half a grapefruit, here's about half a grapefruit. Sorry, it's not totally accurate, but it's close. Here's half a grapefruit, here's another half a grapefruit. And again, and again, and again, and one more. Okay, so if we count up all these halves, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four divided by one half, eight. Let's see if that works out. Four over one multiplied by two over one, that equals eight. Amazing. The number matches exactly what we expected to get. Because we had four objects and we put them into groups of one half. That's how you divide fractions. Any questions?